What's up everyone, full Animix here. Non-anime review time, boys. We finally made it to the review that I've been desperately waiting to make. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about The Mandalorian, which recently just finished, and I'm a bit skeptical to talk about, because I have some, like, different opinions from what everyone has. Everyone's a little bit hyped over this latest season, especially with the ending. I don't know how to feel about it. <laughs> But I think I can definitely say that The Mandalorian is the classic Star Wars we've been missing. The action reminds me so much of the original trilogy, and the fact that it's separate from the overarching Skywalker saga just makes it so much better and so much more enjoyable. And later on I'll talk about that, but, you know, I'm gonna have to talk about this in depth. So without further ado, and without more procrastinating, let's talk about The Mandalorian Season 1 and 2. The plot overall in Mandalorian focuses on a Mandalorian bounty hunter called Mando, who bounty hunts. Yeah. Mando is given a job to receive an asset, giving us the cutest thing in Star Wars, Baby Yoda. Mando decides to go against his code that he will protect the child, as Mando and the child now share a bond with each other, resulting in everyone's favorite dynamic duo, Batman and Robin. Thus the show focuses on these two going through the galaxy. And like I said before, people can watch this show without watching the movies because it's disconnected, but the show still reminds me of nostalgic Star Wars, and the mystery around why Baby Yoda is there, because we've only seen one of his species before, which was Yoda. Overall, season one is definitely awesome, to say the least. The graphics and action are just so amazing and so up to date, but it still doesn't go over the top, which is something I kind of don't like about the new movies because they kind of go a little bit too over the top with the CGI. In this, I feel like most things are practical and there's not a lot of CGI other than like the space stuff, obviously. And you know that big giant Cthulhu monster in season two in episode one? Yeah, that, that's probably CGI. The supporting cast was also picked perfectly. They're also likable and remindable, even though I don't remember half of them, but you know, I scripted this like four days ago, so that's fine. The antagonists are also picked greatly, especially Moff Gideon. He's exactly how I pictured this guy to be, a snarky dickhead, basically. So that's always cool. Now it's finally time to talk about our protagonist. Mando is almost a perfect protagonist, and I say almost because I simply do not know what he's missing, but I feel like he is missing something. The concept of Mando is a unique one to Star Wars, I think. This is the first time we've had a protagonist where we can't see his face, which introduces mystery to the character, and it makes an audience imagine how Mando would react to scenes when we can't see his face. I don't know, I feel like it's a really cool concept that's new to Star Wars, which I really like. We also see him as a badass, but there's also times we sympathize with him and connect with him as someone who we see as a bad person at the start, but ends with him saving baby Yoda. But now that I think about it, I feel like anyone who doesn't save a baby is kind of fucked up, to be honest. <laughs> My favorite part of season one is that it gives good character development for Mando, which is something I really look for in basically any show or movie that I watch. In this series, Mando doesn't like droids. We literally see him go out of his way to not get stuck with droids. Then we are given a backstory to find out that the Separatist droid army from Clone Wars killed his family and destroyed his village, resulting in Mando not liking droids. You know, pretty simple backstory and it ties in with his character because we know nothing about him. But his perspective changes with IC-11. At the start we see IC-11 as a normal droid and its death is not really significant in any way. But no one would expect to bring that droid back from the death and turn him into a nice droid for important character development. Who the fuck does that? <laughs> Anyway, Mando's perspective changes after IC-11 heals him. Damn, that's like a super nice moment. That is a real pog moment, guys. I really hope Mando starts, you know, easing off on droids now over that moment. What's that? Oh, 
He doesn't. He doesn't. Okay. Nine out of ten. It's great. I love it. All right. Meet time, boys, ladies and gentlemen. Season two of Mandalorian. This season was great, but I'm also conflicted about it. On one hand, I love the returning characters from the movies and TV shows, but on the other hand, I'm like, where's my disconnecting Star Wars movie, guys? Season one was good because it was a separate story, but there were subtle moments that remind us that we are in Star Wars. There were no Jedi and there were no laser swords. And what did season two do? They put Jedi and laser swords in. <laughs> In this season, the main plot is Mando trying to return the child to his kind, or the Jedi, as you could say. There are a lot of great moments that I won't get into because you guys are probably here for one reason. What I think is the main problem about this season, there are too many iconic characters in this season. In episode 1, we see that Boba Fett is alive. In season 3, we see Bo-Katan, and she tells Mando to find Ahsoka Tano. In episode 5, we meet Ahsoka Tano. In episode 6, we meet Boba Fett. In the last episode, nothing happens. Like at all. For 30 minutes. Until Luke Skywalker appears to save the day with R2-D2 and take the child away, leaving us with a thank you for riding the holy shit what the fuck just happened roller coaster. Please come again. Do you see the problem? Season 2 is not really for newcomers. Yes, most newcomers from the last season would have gone to watch the other Star Wars media, but I don't think that's right. Before you start accusing me of gatekeeping Star Wars, which, by the way, people who do that are just fucking retarded. I don't understand that. Because Star Wars is supposed to be for everyone. People who just haven't watched Star Wars yet for some unknown reason have their own opinion about it and don't want to watch it. But that select some could have watched Mando and that could have been their outlet into Star Wars. And they could have continued watching Star Wars onwards. I personally think that Mando and A New Hope are the perfect introduction into Star Wars. They just give a good background story of Star Wars. But at some point, they might not continue watching Star Wars for some unknown reason. They could say, nah, I'm not gonna watch Star Wars, I'm gonna stick with Mando. Then season two comes along, and that person is now saying, who dat? Do you get it now? Mando shouldn't really be part of the Skywalker trilogy. Solo is a separate Star Wars story, but is still connected to the trilogy and intrigues us with the origin story of one of our most iconic characters the Millennium Falcon. My point being is that you can have an iconic Star Wars character in your show, but not too many. <laughs> Boba Fett and Bo-Katan make sense because they wear Mandalorian armor and Mando is trying to find out more about the Mandalorians because right now he's got like one girl and we don't see her again. <laughs> But unpopular opinion coming in right now. I feel like either Ahsoka or Luke shouldn't be in this series. I'm more in favor of Ahsoka staying instead of Luke because she makes more sense with the Siege of Mandalore and she could give more background text into it, as you could say. And she hasn't really been casted as live action yet, which I was really looking forward to. And she turned out great, by the way. But the reason I didn't like this season was solely because it ended with Luke Skywalker showing up and destroying all the droids. It was too anticlimactic for me, in my opinion. I am not saying that Luke showing up was bad, okay? I'm just saying it was anticlimactic and it was bad. I think Luke showing up could have worked if the ending ended on a cliffhanger, leaving everyone excited for the new season and wanting more, just like they did with the last season with the Darksaber. It left people wanting more and wanting to know how he has the Darksaber because last time we saw that, it was in bo hands, I think. I don't know, I don't remember Rebels. But I also like Luke being a savage and just wailing on these droids, to be honest. But yeah, it's up to you guys of how you feel. I personally think that this season didn't really suck, but I think it tried stuff that I wouldn't expect this show to do. I think Boba Fett sticking around makes no sense. He's literally only there to give Mando a ride after his ship blew up. I screwed my pants off when I saw Luke in R2-D2, you know? But it felt off to me. And yeah, <laughs> there's not really much I can say. Overall, this season is good if you've watched any other Star Wars movies. But if you haven't, what are you doing with your life, Lamau?
7 out of 10, I love it, but yeah. And yeah, guys, that is my review of Mando Season 2. Um, I'm planning to record another video today, so you might see that next week, or whenever the fuck I want to upload these videos. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys later.